Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Wise tales from storytellers around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended from ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids and how are you? All sorts of exciting things are happening here in our Super Great Kids story world. It's festival season, so there's lots of storytelling festivals to go to where we can hear live storytelling and sit around in circles sharing stories. Just lovely. There's news about England's oldest storytelling festival, the Festival at the Edge in Shropshire, which is taking place in July. So listen out for that just after the story. The story this week is from Sweden a country which has lots of lakes and little islands and forests. It's all about a troll mother who wants to be a human. Do you know what trolls are? That's right, they're story creatures. They often appear in tales from Norway or Denmark or Sweden. They have long tails which have a blob on the end of it, like a lion's tail. And they've got really big ears and they're all wrinkly like an old vegetable. Some people describe them as rather ugly and they're usually unfriendly to humans. In fact, they can actually be quite dangerous and sometimes like to eat people. But you'll be happy to hear that doesn't happen in this story. Before we begin our story, can you try to think of another fairy tale you might have heard of with a troll in it? While we have a quick word with the grown-ups... Hello, super great kids. I'm back. Did you think of a story you know with a troll in it? Well, there's the three billy goats gruff with a rather fierce troll who lives under the bridge. And we've had a troll story on super great kids. Can you remember it? That's right. Well done if you got it. Butterball. Remember him? He kept getting caught by troll mother who kicked his dog. This week's story is told by the same storyteller who told you Butterball. Her name is Emily Hennessy and she has a Swedish background and she loves Scandinavian folk tales. So, are you sitting comfortably? Here's Emily and to start the story she's going to sing a little song about trolls in Swedish. Ready? Snip, snap, snout, story jump. När trollmor har lagt sina elva små trollen och bundit fast dem i svansen. Då sjunger hon sakta till elva små trollen de vackraste ord hon känner. Åh, oh, aj, 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 puff. Åh, oh, aj, 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 puff. Åh, oh, aj, 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 puff, puff. Oh, ay, 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 when the humans arrived, everything changed. There was the noise of machines and falling trees and explosions in the mountains. The trolls didn't like it. Neither did the animals. And so they fled. They headed north. All apart from three of the trolls. Mother Troll, Father Troll, and Troll Boy. Father Troll was the kind of troll that you don't want to come across on your woodland walk. He was always short-tempered and grumpy, and when the humans arrived on his land, oh, he was furious. He was determined to stay living in the forest where his family had been for over 3,000 years. But when the humans began to fell the very trees that his forefathers had planted, he was filled with so much rage and fury that Father Troll actually exploded. And then it was just Mother Troll and Troll Boy, left all alone. With Father Troll gone and their home being crushed all around them, Troll Boy said to his mother, Come on, let's leave. 
Let's go north with all of our friends. I don't like being so close to the humans. But Mother Troll had quite a different plan. She had been secretly fascinated by the humans for a long time. She had spent hours peering in through their little cottage windows, watching them live their curious lives. And when she smelt the wafts of coffee and freshly baked bread, oh, it was lovely. Mm, I want to taste it all. Troll boy, we are going to live like real human beings. Mother Troll found a tiny cottage by a lake which had been empty for several years. It was half fallen down, but it didn't matter to Mother Troll. Here she could bake bread, drink coffee and live like real humans. But to do that, they needed some of those little round things that humans seem to call money. And so Mother Troll and Troll Boy tied up their long tails and pulled on hats and scarves to cover their great big floppy ears. And mistaken for funny-looking human beings, the trolls managed to get work, washing people's clothes. Because Mother Troll couldn't count, her customers could pay her whatever they liked. And thanks to a little bit of troll magic, the clothes always came out cleaner than ever before. It didn't take long for Mother Troll to become the best-known, cheapest washerwoman in the whole forest. Summer soon arrived, with warm evenings and clear skies and birdsong and flowers. And with it came the birth of a princess. The king and the queen wanted the best for their new, precious daughter. And so they moved to a palace in the forest where she could breathe in the fresh, clean air. Word soon reached the palace of the fantastic washerwoman, and before she knew it, Mother Troll was washing the clothes of the royal princess. Oh, things could not be better for the trolls. They were getting enough money to buy as much bread and coffee as they liked. Even Troll Boy had to admit that sweet cinnamon buns were a really good human invention. But things soon changed. You see, when Mother Troll picked up the clothes of the princess, her head began to feel all fuzzy. Never before had she seen anything so tiny, so sweet. The little socks. The beautiful dresses, the miniature gloves, oh, they all sent a deep sense of longing straight to Mother Troll's heart. For a long time she stood looking at the clothes, holding the clothes, smelling the clothes. And then she called her son over to admire the garments with her. When you get married, your little ones can wear clothes like these too. <laughs> Yeah, right, said Troll Boy, like they'd fit a troll baby. Troll baby? No, 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 no. You're not having troll babies. No, now you're practically human. You'll have little human babies, all oh, with soft hair and tiny ears and little feet. <laughs> troll Boy grunted angrily several times, as teenage trolls usually do, and then stormed out of the house, slamming the door behind him. But he knew that when Mother Troll got an idea in her head, that was it. And he was worried. Mother Troll had fallen so in love with the princess clothes that every week she would take one item, a little hat, a tiny vest, and put it into her wooden chest. When Troll Boy returned the clean washing to the palace, he had to make sure, with a little bit of troll magic, that nothing appeared to be missing. And so before he handed over the basket of clean laundry, he would whisper, Oh, ay, 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 puff. Oh, ay, 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 puff. This continued for a few weeks. But it soon became clear in the palace that some of the princess clothes were going missing. Someone must be stealing them. Well, it couldn't be the washerwoman or her son because the clothes were always counted correctly upon their return. And so the blame fell instead on a girl called Inga, 
who worked at the palace and was responsible for mending the princess's clothes. Get rid of that thief, cried the queen. I promise, I promise it wasn't me, said Inga. But the poor girl was chased out of the palace by the guards, out into the woods. Oh, she had no family, no friends, nowhere to go. She ran through the trees, tears streaming from her face. Soon the forest grew dark, and Inga found herself by a lake. She stared into the murky water and wished that she could become a little fish living under the surface, hidden from the cruelties of this world. At that very moment, she felt something tug at her dress. She looked down to see a rather small, rather ugly lady staring up at her. You'll catch a chill this late in the evening, my dear. Why don't you come inside my house? Inga was glad to hear a friendly voice and happily followed the lady into her little home, relieved to find it was, of course, only the home of the washerwoman. Inga was invited to stay with the lady and her son for as long as she liked. Oh, just cook us some of that nice food they eat over there in the other human bean houses. Inga didn't realise she was living with trolls. She helped with the cooking and the cleaning. Mother Troll was, of course, delighted. She saw in Inga a future wife for her son. And Troll Boy thought Inga was so very lovely that he couldn't help but hope that this time his mother might be right. The days turned to weeks, and Inga found the strange boy's constant stare uncomfortable. It reminded her of a lonely dog. She began to take long walks through the forest to get away from him. One day, on one of those walks, she bumped into the royal huntsman from the palace, out riding on his horse. Oh, he probably thinks I'm a thief too, she thought, and she began to run away. Wait, he called, wait. I know you didn't steal those clothes. Please, come back and talk to me. She stopped. She turned and, well, before too long, she and he were happily chatting away and picking flowers for each other from the meadow. Trollboy had followed Inga through the woods and saw everything. He was heartbroken. He ran back to the little cottage and there was Mother Troll. Oh, Trollboy, look at this beautiful little dress. Oh, yours and Inga's baby will look so sweet in this. <laughs> Do you really think she'd want to marry an ugly troll like me? No, he'd have to be tall and handsome and have no tail. Trollboy grabbed the clean washing and stormed off to the palace. When Inga returned, Mother Troll decided it was time to talk to her. She opened the chest and showed her all of the baby clothes. When you marry my son, all of these lovely clothes will be yours. Inga looked at the clothes in astonishment, the little hats and vests and dresses and socks. But these are the missing princess clothes. You must have stolen them. You're the thief. Oh, you humans, you've got such strange ways of thinking. You have to just get what you can in this world, and I got these. It's as simple as that. Mother Troll turned around angrily, and a great long tail swished out behind her. Inga screamed and fled. She ran into the forest, ran and ran and ran until she reached the huntsman's cottage. Meanwhile, Troll Boy had arrived at the palace with the washing. He handed the basket over but was so distracted that he forgot to utter the magic spell. They counted the garments. Uh, there's something missing here. A dress. You're missing a dress. Oh, oh yes, said Trollboy. Um, yeah, I must have just left that behind. I'll go and fetch it right away. He hurried back to the cottage and opened the chest. But which dress did they mean? A mother troll wasn't there. He'd have to decide for himself. Was it this white one? Or the pink one? Or maybe the blue one? Or the green one? He decided to take one of each just to be sure. When he returned to the palace with an armful of princess dresses, 
everyone realised who the real thief was. The guards were called. Catch him! screamed the Queen. But Trollboy was so small that he snuck through everyone's legs and out into the forest. By the time the guards arrived at the troll's cottage, they found it empty. Not a troll in sight. All that was left was some coffee, a bit of bread, and some half-dried washing flapping on the line outside. The days passed, and Inga stayed with the huntsman. The queen gave her a huge apology for having so wrongly accused her of stealing, and a few months later, she and the huntsman were given the finest wedding they could ever have dreamed of. One evening, several months later, as Inga, her husband, and their tiny newborn baby were together in their cottage, Inga heard a noise at the window. She looked over to see two big round eyes staring at her through the glass. When she blinked, they were gone. Inga rushed outside, and there, on the doorstep, lay a brown paper parcel. Inga opened the parcel, and inside was a beautiful white Princess dress. When troll mothers lay down her eleven little children and tied up their tails like so, she sings then softly to the eleven little children the most beautiful words she knows. Oh, I, 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 puff. Oh, I, 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 puff. Oh, I, 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 puff, puff. Oh, I, 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 puff. Ah, oh, what a great story. Thanks to Emily Hennessy for sharing that with us. Or, as they say in Swedish, tack so muka. Thanks very much. Can you say tack? Tack so muka. Thanks so much. You can speak some Swedish. It's nice to be able to say thank you in another language. Who do you think left the little dress on the doorstep as a present? And why do you think they left it there? Ask your grown-ups what they think if they're listening. Now... Here's some exciting news about a storytelling festival next month. If you're in the UK this July and you're a fan of storytellers like Kate Corkery and Peter Chand, then here's some news for you. England's oldest storytelling festival, Festival at the Edge, will be taking place on the weekend of July the 15th until the 17th. Many people camp on site over the weekend in the beautiful grounds of Hopton Court Estate near Cleebury Mortimer in Shropshire in England. And it's going to be full of tremendous tales from terrific tellers, including storytellers you've heard on Super Great Kids Stories, Peter Chand, who told you how the elephant got its trunk, and Kate Corkery, who's told you lots and lots of stories from Ireland, including Molly and the Leprechaun. There'll be something for all the family. Traditional tales from around the world, live music, belly dancing, lots of stories for children and adults, plus Punch and Judy and circus skills in the Big Top Marquee. For more information and to book tickets, go to www.festivalattheedge.org. Do go along. I went last year. It was very fun. Might see you there. Now it's time for me to dip into my bag of happies and say some thank yous. First of all, I'd like to say a very big thank you to all our subscribers. You're helping us to keep making this podcast. So thanks particularly to Patreon subscribers Cora and Jody from Sebastopol in California and to their grown-ups Eric and Robin. And Thanks to Laura and her daughter Elizabeth from Baltimore for your donation on Kofi. Elizabeth is five and a half and is a very keen storyteller. Keep up the storytelling, Elizabeth. Glad you found us. Let us know if you're a subscriber and if you'd like a mention. And thanks for some really lovely reviews to Sue Chops and the Dib family in the US. 
and to catch a fairy unicorn princess in New Zealand. If you'd like to give a one-off donation of any amount on Ko-fi or subscribe to our podcast on Patreon and get bonus stories, early access and ad-free and lots of super great kids stories goodies, then go to our website on supergreatkidsstories.com or to subscribe to Apple, go to Apple Podcasts. Now, you've all been drawing and sending stupendous pictures of our stories to share on our Facebook page. So, here's some thank yous to super great kids who've sent in pictures recently. Thanks to five-year-old Mac from Silver in North Carolina, who's drawn a magnificent picture of Baba Yaga, the scary Russian witch. I like the way you've drawn her very spiky teeth and her mean-looking eyes, Mac. Very scary indeed, and super great writing too. Thank you. And six-year-old Jackson from New Zealand has sent a marvellous picture of the how and why story, Why Do Crocodiles Sleep With Their Mouths Open? Jackson, I love your crocodile, his multicoloured scales and his eye which sticks out at the top of his head. I wonder what you'd do if you discovered a crocodile egg. If you like crocodiles, then have you listened to Toop's baby crocodile's birthday? Thank you for this, Jackson. And six-year-old Lee Dagat has drawn a very imaginative picture of the Chinese story about Goose Girl and of the Brazilian Cinderella story, Snake Sister. The Goose Girl's rainbow wings are magical and the way you've drawn the happy wedding picture for Snake Sister is just lovely. I really like the design on her wedding dress and the huge star hanging above them at the wedding. Thank you very much. And Kashvi, who is seven, has drawn two pictures. The first is Anansi and the party. I like the way Anansi's drumming and all the people at the party have frozen. And the way you've written mum power above the mum, who comes along and solves the problem. And in your second picture, Kashvi, of the Irish story Molly and the Leprechaun, I particularly like the way that the leprechaun is so tiny. I wonder if you could tell one of these stories to someone at home. And Wesley, who is four and a half, has drawn a beautiful picture of the Amazonian story, How the Snakes Got Their Poison. I love all your different coloured snakes. And great writing too. Thank you, Wesley. And thanks to seven-year-old Ed from Western Supermare, he sent a lovely picture of the lonely giant. Great labelling, Ed. And I like the fact that you've drawn musical notes above the lady giant to show that she's singing. I can tell you listened to the story really carefully. Glad you enjoyed it. Hope you're enjoying some more of our giant stories at the moment. And siblings Freddie and Nia have sent in beautiful pictures. Freddie was inspired by the Lonely Giant story and has drawn the giant who's jumped into the sea and is shrinking. I like the way you've used different coloured blues for the sea and how the giant is underneath the waves. Your picture has lots of energy and the sea feels big and scary. And Nia has drawn a picture of the wise little story, The Seed, with all the children bringing the king beautiful flowers which they've grown and the little boy handing over his empty pot. Nia, I like the way the king is inside his palace and looks so big and powerful and all the children compared to him look very, very small. Thank you both for sharing these. And Salvador from Sydney, who is seven, has drawn a wonderfully atmospheric picture of the house belonging to the Russian witch Baba Yaga. It's such a good drawing, Salvador. I love the way you've coloured the night sky in purple and the light shining in the windows of the hut and the creepy trees which wiggle their way off the page, almost as if they're trying to escape. All very scary indeed. Well done and thanks for sharing this. And Jason, who is five from Pensacola in Florida, has drawn this super great picture of the Lonely Giant story with the whale coming to his rescue. He also added a whale shark and a porpoise. Jason loves whales and wants to be a whale rescuer when he grows up. Lovely idea, Jason. Jason also likes the story told by Toop, How the Whale Got Its Sad Song. Well, that is a really good story too, Jason. 
Thanks so much for sharing your picture. I love all the different colours that you've used for the water. And Elwood, who is five, and Thora, who is seven, have sent in some super great pictures, all bright and happy. Elwood, I love your picture of a Nancy hiding in a bush. What a clever idea to put a hole in the paper to help him escape. And Thora, your little creatures from El Cangrejo the Crab King story are just brilliant. I love the way they're all confronting the bully together. The mosquitoes and the little turtles and the frogs all challenging the grumpy looking Crab King. He's a really fabulous baddie, isn't he? Hurrah! Thanks for sharing these. If you'd like to see these pictures, they're all on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. That's it for this week. Thanks to all our patrons and subscribers for making this episode possible. Keep telling these stories to anyone who will listen. Thank you all. Can you remember how to say thank you in Swedish? Tack så muka. I'll see you next week. This podcast was produced at Wardour Studios in London. Mm-hmm.